Hey everyone, my name is Biz and welcome to your sixth flowchart tutorial. In, in the previous couple of tutorials, I had talked about decision boxes and I had explained various problems like the largest of three numbers and also the modified division. So now I think that it's already time to give you the concept of loops. Now, loops in computer science mean repetition of a particular process. The process can be anything. But if we repeat the same process over and over again for a particular number of times, then that is called a loop. Now, just recall that flowchart that we had drawn to add two numbers. So suppose instead of two numbers, someone had given you five numbers, then what would you do? You would say that hey, I would just take five numbers from the user, store them in five different variables and then I'll just add them up. That's it. That's how simple it is. But suppose someone would have given you 20,000 numbers. Then what you would do? Because you don't have 20,000 variables, right? And at that time, you need a loop. And how you need a loop? I'll tell you that. So what we did here is this is a flowchart to get the sum of some amount of numbers and how many numbers that would be specified by the user. So we start, we set the different variables that we are going to need to zero and then we ask the user to input the value of n. Here n stores the number of items that we are going to add. So suppose the user enters 10, okay? So then after that we go here. We ask the user to input a number and we store that number in A. And after that, we do this sum equals sum plus a. It means whatever is the value of sum before, it's overwritten by the new value, which is sum plus a. So suppose at first the value of sum was 0, and then suppose the user enters 23. So now the value of sum plus a is 23 plus 0, which is 23, and we store that 23 into sum. So now the content of sum is 23. Now initially, and then what we do? We do i is equal to i plus 1. Now initially the value of i was 1. So now the value of i is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So after this process box, we have sum 23 and i2. Then we go here and we check whether i is less than equals to n or not, which means whether 2 is less than equals to 10 or not. If it satisfies, we send the flow of control to again here, where the user have to enter another data. So it asks the user to enter another number. So he enters another number and that number is overwritten in A. So suppose now the user enters 15. So now A stores 15. Now with that 15, you go down, you do this sum equals sum plus A. Now the value of sum is 23 because we had calculated that in the previous step, right? So now 23 plus 15 which is 38 and that 38 will be stored in sum. So now the content of sum is 38. And then we do i equals i plus 1. So now i equals 2 plus 1 because the current value of i is 2. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So now the value of i is 3. Sum 38, i3 we check again whether 3 is less than or equals to 10 it is so we again move the control to here so you know that like this how many times will it continue obviously 10 times right because when the value of i will be 11 then this condition this won't satisfy so what you will do you will go to the, follow the no hand you will go down and you will display the sum and then you will stop so that is the concept of loops Look, the num if I had not used loops, then what you would have to do? Here, you would need 10 variables like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So that would just create a mess, right? But instead, using a loop, I just used a single variable to get the data from the user. And in each iteration of that loop, I added that number with the content of sum. So the content of sum would keep increasing in each iteration because it adds itself with the new number that the user has given to you, right? And how many times will it continue? 
the number of times that the user has provided whatever is the value of n that many times the iteration will continue so that's it guys that's the concept of loops now we'll be using the loops in the next couple of tutorials because I have many other problems to show you so thank you guys for watching and talk to you guys in the next one